centuries, humans have been fascinated about the possibility of life existing on other planets, particularly life of Mars. Now, much of the early speculation was either baseless or just based on the assumption that all planets contained life that was adapted to their specific environment. With the invention of telescopes providing a better understanding of Mars, there became this somewhat scientific basis for the possibility of life there, as it had a lot in common with Earth. You see, when viewing Mars through a telescope, one of the most obvious features is the polar ice caps. There were also large areas of the planet's surface that were darker than the rest. Early observers, they believed that the dark areas were oceans, the light areas were land. The existence of oceans and ice caps supported the idea that life could indeed exist on Mars, but the perceived similarities went beyond just the planet's topography. The length of a Martian day is similar to that of Earth at about 24 hours and 40 minutes. Mars also has a similar axial tilt to Earth, which means the planet experiences seasons just like we do, though their seasons are each twice as long since a Martian year is about twice that of an Earth year. Better telescopes then led to the observation of canals on the surface of Mars, which many believed had been constructed by intelligent life. Of course, even better telescopes showed that the canals had actually been optical illusions and that they don't actually exist. It also revealed that the dark areas were not oceans. They were caused by different surface materials and elevations. Spectroscopic analysis then showed that Mars's thin atmosphere contained neither oxygen nor water. So, while the idea of little green men remained popular, by the early 1900s, the scientific evidence made it appear that Mars was just completely uninhabitable. But these were all observations and calculations being done on Earth over 100 million miles away. With the invention of spaceflight, the decision was made to actually go to Mars and to look around and see if we could find any life and little green men. The Viking Program. So, in 1975, NASA sent two space probes off to Mars, Viking 1 and Viking 2. Each probe consisted of an orbiting satellite and also a lander. The goal of the orbiters, that was to take high-resolution photos of the surface of the entire planet, thus creating the first real Martian world map. The landers also took photos from the surface of the planet, but their main goal was to search for signs of life. And this could have been a really short search. If the first photos the Viking one sent back to Earth showed a confused alien poking the camera lens, well, that would have ended the debate, wouldn't it? But as you well know, that didn't happen. We don't live in that timeline. So this meant that the Viking landers had to perform some actual science on the Martian soil to search for signs of microbial life. One experiment, known as labeled release, involved adding water and nutrients to Martian soil and checking for the consumption and release of specific gases that would indicate metabolism taking place. And the results from this experiment were actually positive. However, another experiment tested the soil to measure for organic compounds, and this came back negative. As a reminder here, organic compounds in chemistry just refers to molecules containing carbon linked to hydrogen, oxygen, or nitrogen. It doesn't mean the material is or was a part of a living organism, but it's the stuff that all life we know about is made out of. These contradictory results were not only inconclusive, they were also quite bizarre. You see, organic compounds seem to be extremely common, having been found on the moon, on asteroids, pretty much everywhere that we've looked, except for Mars. Still, the lack of organics on Mars seemed to disprove the idea that metabolism had taken place, and scientists were able to identify a non-biological process in which this labeled release experiment could have produced results that looked like metabolism. In the end, the experiments were ruled to show no clear signs of life, as the labelled release experiments result could be explained without metabolism. However, the 2008 Phoenix lander made an important discovery that calls that determination into question. Phoenix discovered that Mars had high levels of perchlorate salts, making up from 0.5 to 1% of the soil in different areas. The Viking lander's experiments to test for organic compounds, they required heating up the soil, and at those higher temperatures, percolates oxidize and destroy organic compounds. This meant that the soil could have contained up to 0.1% organic matter while still testing negative. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but Earth is teeming with life, yet our soil is only 5% organic matter. While this new information didn't change the official ruling for the Viking experiments, they are now generally considered to be inconclusive rather than showing no evidence of life. ALH 84001 
So the next big news in the search for life on Mars came from meteorite ALH84001 or Alan Hills 84001. The 1.93 kilogram or 4.3 pound meteorite was found in 1984 by American meteorite hunters in the Allen Hills in Antarctica. This was an exciting discovery in general as it was one of the oldest known Martian meteorites. Chemical analysis of the rock also suggested that at the time it was ejected from Mars, there was still liquid water on the planet's surface. This was a cool find at the time, and for the next decade, that was mostly all it was. However, in 1996, NASA scientists imaged the meteorite using an electron microscope. Embedded in the rock, they discovered structures that appeared to be fossilized bacteria. This was huge international news. President Clinton even made a televised announcement about the potential discovery. Unfortunately, though, scientists had to swoop in and spoil all of the fun. Laboratory experimentation showed that the structures observed in Allen Hills 84001 could have been created by geological processes alone without the need for microorganisms. Bit of a bummer. Now, this isn't definitive one way or the other, and unless we find bacteria on Mars matching the shapes of the alleged fossils, we'll likely never know whether or not the meteorite contained fossilized bacteria. However, while this was initially promising evidence, scientists have also warned that morphology alone should not be used to declare the existence of life on Mars, as morphology is just inherently subjective. Perseverance All right, so this brings us to the most recent and most exciting discovery to date. Among Perseverance's main goals was to search for signs of ancient life on Mars. As such, it was sent to the Yezero Crater on Mars, an area that is believed to have once been a lake of liquid water, as suggested by its river Delta. Assuming that this is correct, it would make Yezero Crater a prime candidate for where ancient life on Mars may have existed. Perseverance collected various rock samples, and in the summer of 2024, NASA announced the discovery of a unique rock known as Chiyava Falls. The sample of rock was covered with leopard spots, white spots with black rims. Now on Earth, leopard spots are often associated with ancient microbial life, so there was certainly the possibility that these spots might be as well. Over the next year, Perseverance analyzed the rock sample, and that data was then sent to Earth where it was peer-reviewed. In September of 2025, NASA finally reported the results of that year of research. The white and black areas of the leopard spots were made up of two different compounds, vernite, hydrated iron phosphate, and gregite, iron sulfide. These are both found on Earth and are frequently associated with microbial life. For example, vivianite is often found in peat bogs full of decaying organic matter. Now, it's important to note that vivianite and gregite are both low-energy versions of iron mixed with either sulfur or phosphorus. And while thermodynamics tells us that things want to be at their lowest energy states, iron is so stable at high energy that it won't just create vivianite and gregite on its own. There needs to be some sort of process to force iron out of its higher energy state, and one of the ways that that happens is microbial life. Now, some bacteria can force the iron out of its high energy state using the resulting release in energy to power its metabolism. And we know from life on Earth that this could absolutely result in the sort of leopard spots that were observed at Chiyava Falls. There are also other relevant organic compounds present that would be necessary for these bacteria to exist. Now, of course, we also know from Earth that there are a couple of other ways for this to happen without the presence of life. One alternative would be if there were high temperatures for a prolonged period of time, but this doesn't seem to be the case. The chemistry of the rock and the surrounding area all indicate that this was a low-temperature environment. The other alternative would be that the area was highly acidic for an extended period of time. But again, all of the other evidence in the rock and the surrounding area suggests that this was not the case. This leaves us with two possibilities. Either the leopard spots found by the Perseverance rover were formed as a result of chemical reactions involving microbial life, or there is some fourth method by which these were created that is hitherto unknown. There's plenty that humans don't know, so an unknown fourth option could be possible, but for the first time since our examinations of Mars began, scientists have found something that is best explained by there having been life on Mars. What's that mean? Now, there are a couple of ways we can answer the question, <laughs> what does that mean? So let's start with the surface level reading. If it can be conclusively proven that the leopard spots on this rock are a biosignature, that would mean that there was microbial life on Mars at least as recently as 3.5 billion years ago. It does not mean that there is currently life, just that Mars had life on it at some point. 
but it also would have mean that there's no life now. There is almost certainly no life on the surface of Mars, if for no other reason that the thin atmosphere allows the planet to be bombarded with high amounts of solar radiation. All living things have DNA, which is easily damaged by radiation, so that can probably be ruled out without even addressing things like the cold temperatures and the lack of water on the planet's surface. However, it is generally believed that there is liquid water somewhere beneath the surface of Mars. The deeper in a planet you go, the hotter it becomes because of the increased pressure, so it is almost certain that there is liquid water somewhere down there conveniently being underground would also protect against the sun's radiation so if life once did exist on mars it's not impossible that some microbial species may have survived and still exists in these underground aquifers more importantly if it can be proven that the leopard spots are the result of ancient life on mars that would be the single most important discovery in human history if life developed independently on both mars and earth two planets in the same solar system that would effectively be proof that life throughout the universe is extremely common it doesn't necessarily mean that complex life is but that life in general would just have to be common if life in the universe was rare, the odds of it appearing independently on two neighboring planets would just be inconceivably small. The alternative would be that life did not form independently and that it was transferred either from Earth to Mars or Mars to Earth via panspermia. This would be impossible to prove without finding extinct life on Mars, as we would need to compare Martian DNA to that of things found on Earth, but it would still be a possibility. And if panspermia between two planets in the same solar system was possible, well then, we couldn't necessarily rule out interstellar panspermia. So, regardless of whether life formed independently or was transferred from one planet to the other, either would open up the possibility of life being far more common in the universe than it had previously appeared. Also, if the rock from Chiava Falls is proof that life existed on the planet, that could mean that Mars holds the answers to how life began. The rock sample is about 3.5 billion years old, which is the same age as the oldest evidence of life on Earth. However, a big reason that we can't find any older evidence of life on Earth is that rocks on our planet just don't get much older than that. Earth is extremely geologically active, and all of that activity results in rocks being destroyed and recycled to make new rocks. The oldest known rocks on Earth are 4 billion years old, but they're also in Canada's Northwest Territories, where life probably wouldn't have spread yet. But those are the oldest remaining rocks known to exist, which means that the first half a billion years of Earth's history have just been erased forever. But Mars is much less geologically active, and at 3.5 billion years old, Chihuahua Falls is considered one of the geologically younger areas of Mars. That means there could potentially be another billion years worth of evidence for earlier life on Mars, evidence that might be able to fill in some of our gaps of knowledge on the earliest origins of life. What happens next? Now, the next step would be to get that rock back to Earth, which had always been the plan. The Perseverance rover was just part one of the three-part Mars Sample Return mission, a joint venture between NASA and the European Space Agency. Having the rover fill 43 tubes with samples was step one, and step two was to send a new Mars lander that would collect the samples and launch them into orbit around Mars. The third step was to send a spacecraft to retrieve those samples and return them to Earth. Now, that's all. Much easier said than done. Perseverance was launched in 2020 and touched down on Mars in early 2021. But the second stage of the mission is still in the design and testing phase. It's also unclear whether or not the mission is even going to continue. The program was reviewed in 2024, at which point it was determined the remainder of the return plan was set to cost $11 billion. This was deemed unfeasible, so NASA tried to rework a cheaper version of the return mission. For many, that is more than a little disappointing. While $11 billion is a massive amount of money, it seems like a small price to pay for what could be considered one of the most important discoveries of all time, especially considering the enormity of the United States' annual federal budget. Unfortunately, the new administration has proposed massive cuts to NASA, so as of 2025, it remains unknown whether the samples collected by Perseverance will ever be brought back to Earth. On the bright side, if we do ever get those samples back to Earth, it will be really easy to determine whether the leopard spots were created by microbial life or by other means. We do this sort of analysis on Earth all the time with the rocks found here, and at this point, scientists have it down to, well, they have it down to a science, but until we can either retrieve the samples for analysis or discover a previously unknown method for the leopard spots to have formed without the need for bacteria to have been present, life on Mars will remain an open question. 
That said, even if the NASA ESA mission fails to acquire the needed funding, China has plans to launch their own mission, Taiwan 3, in late 2028. According to their current timeline, samples collected by the project would be scheduled to return to Earth in June of 2031. Even if we add a few years in for inevitable delays, there's a good chance that mission could be completed by 2035. And the best part would be that they already know where to grab their first sample. Thank you for watching.